Somebody told me once that that's a, a part of that process of getting past that point is some sort of balm or salve. Yeah. Third Degree the Podcast is brought to you by Soccer90.com. All Third Degree listeners get 20% off when you order at Soccer90.com. FC Dallas, FC Dallas, U.S. National Team, international gear. They've got it all, everything you want. All from around the world, Soccer90.com, 20% off with code Third Degree. Well, hello there, FC Dallas Curious fan. Welcome to episode, as I see written here in red crayon, 196, 196 of Third Degree, the podcast. Hi, it's me, Peter, tagging along with my two friends in FCD crime. First off, not the master criminal, but he's a good henchman, Dan Crook. Wow. I, I'm... I think that was a an insult. Maybe it was a compliment. No, a I don't compliment. really know. No, it's a compliment. Okay, I'll, I'll take it then. Okay, thanks. Very good. How are you Hi. doing, Dan? I just enjoying the winter wonderland. How's that beard coming in this ice storm? Uh, you know, it's not reached uh, like it did a couple of years ago when I had ice crystal ice crystals hanging off it, <laughs> or ice crysticles. Crysticles. They're like, like they're like small testicles of ice. <laughs> They're, they're that shape, <laughs> like two teardrops together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, good. I'm glad you don't have ice. I'm glad this ice got off to a great yeah, start. It did get off to a fantastic start. And uh, my hero, your hero, everybody's hero n- does not have testicles on his face or beard. It <laughs> is uh, editor, founder of Third Degree, Buzz Carrick. Come in, Buzz. Yeah, there's no way I can ever grow a beard good enough to have a... Uh, Chesticles, or whatever you just call them. Chesticles. Beardicles, <laughs> whatever you call them. Crysticles, Crysticles. Whatever they are. Wait, you, 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 you're going to grow a beard with boobs on them? Chin nuts? Yeah, no. I, I can not I can barely grow a patchy scruff, let alone a, an actual beard. <clears throat> yep. I feel for you, Buzz. I'm yeah. in the same boat. I'm not a I, beard person. I can I can never get past about a week when it starts to itch, and I'm out. That's it. Same. It shaves, shaves it off. That's it. Same. Same here. Somebody told me once that that's a, a part of that process of getting past that point is some sort of balm or salve you put on your beard or something that makes it softer so it doesn't get itchy. But that just seems like a lot of yeah. work to do something that is supposed to be the opposite of doing the work in the first place, right? <laughs> way too much work. I get the same benefit about shaving once a week instead. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, it works fine. Like in, a, in the course of a week, Dan, how much time do you commit to your beard? Five minutes. Oh really? So oh, you're I was very gonna say none. <laughs> you're gonna say you're a low maintenance beard guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, other than like trimming the the mustache part, so it doesn't hang over my lip. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. I mean, the worst the worst thing you might get is if it's windy, it might blow around. You don't get any. You don't put product in it or anything. I'm bad for remembering that, so it's just a just a good condition. Okay. Hmm. Do you wash your beard like you wash your hair? No shampoo, just conditioner. Apparently, really? shampoo is very bad huh. for it, for that. Anyway, look, Buzz. Things we're learning on Third Degree of the podcast today. Yeah, th- things I'll never need to know in my life. How <laughs> 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 to care for a beard? <laughs> well, I enjoyed this episode <laughs> of Beard Talk with uh, Dan. You're Kirk. gonna have that great conversation with Sebastian Ubiaga now, and uh, yeah. and then Sebastian Legette as well. By the way, I got a comment from a uh, a good pod listener that suggested that you and Buzz should supply me a hard to pronounce name each episode, and I have to do the Sesame Street slow uh, syllable by syllable building of understanding how to say said name. And I think that's a hilarious idea. Uh, we'll, we'll run out of names eventually, but I suppose well, we they don't have them. to be FC Dallas names. Oh, I see. okay. I mean, Not I think FC. that w- that would make sense to be you know related to the club. And I think I know how to say most everybody's name correctly at this point. Oh, here's Dan Scott. <laughs> okay, Dan, that's a that's not. I don't know if starting with uh, Christoph, that's correct, right? Yep. Okay, hold on. Let's see if we can do this. M- might ski ooh switch. Matusevich. Wait, ma t 
say vich. Ma t say vich. Yeah, I never would have gotten that. Christoph Mati Savich. There you go. Well, we, we used to, at, at my old club back home, we had a Polish striker called Christoph Maciasiewicz, and uh, I had to do the PA announcements, so it took a minute to <laughs> to figure that one out. And then we played a team where all the players were Latvian or Polish uh, originally, and that took a long time. Yeah, I bet. That's a, that's a hard name to say. Christoph Maciasiewicz. Uh, to really make that a funny bit, Buzz, we'd need the uh, Sesame Street uh, piano music in <laughs> so, the background. Sound effects, yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> probably copyrighted, but yeah. Bloop. Bloop. You know, that would be funny. All right. Uh, it was a great idea. I'm glad we did that. Um, okay. So you know, we're just kind of killing time because, frankly, we don't have a ton to talk about because, Buzz, as you well know, this, the club isn't even in our hemisphere or on our continent. They're all the way over in Spain. And other than the little bit of this and that they're dribbling out from their own social media accounts, uh, we don't really know what's going on or I'm, I'm not even sure we, uh, do we a hundred percent know who the 20 something players that went on the trip are? Yes. In fact, uh, quite shockingly, FC Dallas uh, sent out a email of assets, you know, photos and video like they do. That's not the part that was surprising. The part that was surprising is they actually sent along with it a 26 man, uh, roster. Well, I should say 26. It's actually 28. It's the 26 players under contract and then two extras. So there are two players that were not under contract that we, that went along and we identified some of them from stuff on social media, but, um, we could talk about each of them if you like. One of them is Herbert Endele, which is the first round pick from Indiana. And the other is Andre Costa, who's a North Texas player. Well, why don't you tell us about both then? Sure. Endele is and, a, and why maybe it's unique or yeah. special that they're on this trip. Right. So Endele, well, the fact that they're on the trip means that they're um, still in sort of in contention for a roster spot. Endele is the first round pick from IU. He was a right wing mostly in college. Uh, they drafted him with the idea, perhaps, that they could convert him to right back. You know, Dallas loves to convert wingers to backs. It's, so does everybody, but they do particularly. So they tried that experiment, some in training. They tried him at wing, some in training. Even in the scrimmages, they tried that, the one scrimmage we've seen publicly. So the fact that he's along on the trip means that they thought enough of him to try that process. Now, it's important to understand that if they sign him, particularly with the idea that he's going to be this right-back conversion, that will give them five right-backs between the two teams, which is obviously one too many. So there'll be a real pressure there. If he does, if they do decide to sign him, it's because they think that something else is not getting it done. And having three right backs at, with SC Dallas or with North Texas, either one doesn't make any sense. So uh, there's no point in bringing him in if you don't move somebody out. And the ideal candidate in my mind will be um, Colin Smith. Who's been for two years at North Texas now and is, outplayed that league, you know, and needs to play somewhere better. So he needs to go to the USL championship. So we'll have to watch that and see how it goes. You know, his presence in Spain means that they're at least still considering him for a contract. The uh, Cameron Lacey, who was the third round pick, I know that they offered him a North Texas deal. And for now he's passing and trying to find other things. The second round pick um, winter break, I think is how you say it. Um, he, <laughs> I, I didn't look it up in front of me. I'm, I did it from memory. It's not like it's a confusing name. I just don't remember whether it's break or Breck. Um, anyway, he's winter another... break is too good. I hope Brink. it's winter break. Oh, Brink. Especially so. winter is coming. Yeah, Winton Brink. To be oh. fair to him, Ryan Winton Brink. Okay. Unfortunately, he had a good first week of training in camp, um, and coach liked him because he said he was a really intelligent player, which this coach particularly likes. Unfortunately, he is 24, and more unfortunately, he got hurt on the mm. Friday of the first week of training. So then he couldn't train like the whole second week. And then they left for Spain and he wasn't along for the ride. So, you know, that kind of kid, unfortunately, when you get hurt, when you're trying to make a team, that's not going to do you very good. So uh, will he show up with North Texas? Will he go somewhere else? I, I really, I don't have any idea. Um, I have not seen him. He hasn't been around for now for like a week and a half. So tough break, but um, that's, that's so to get back to the point of Endelay making the, the team, if he does make the team, makes pressures the roster in a way because of the volume of right backs they'll have. So past him is the kid named Andre Costa, 
who's a North Texas player. He's the one that's a Brazilian American. Oddly, he was a former U seventeen and but played in Brazil or is from Brazil or something like that. And he was in played in sport Spain. That's where they found him for a little bit. He was with North Texas last season and. He came in early. They thought enough of him that he came in early last year and trained with SC Dallas' first team all through camp. And then when North Texas camp opened, he went with them. Uh, and the same thing happened this year. He was in camp before the, the team has left, before North Texas is in camp, and they've taken him with them. So they think enough of him that he can slot in as an eight, which is a spot we've talked about there being a hole uh, where they need some depth. So he's slotted in filling that depth role for now. But I think obviously at this point – they don't think enough of him to sign him to the first team because they did sign Mulatto and and um, Bernie and they did not sign Costa. So he'll be a guy to keep an eye on in North Texas this year. So um, those are the two extra players that went along on the trip. Oh, wait. So, but are you telling me that Kristoff Matiskevich is not on the roster? No, that, that was a Dan oh. name from when he was at Luton. I know. Did you see how well I pronounced it though? Oh, that was, is that what that was? That was I mean, it just rolled drop. right off the tongue. Did I not say it right, Dan? And no, <laughs> Matty Skavich. It was it was about third degree standard. What is it? How does how is it pronounced? Matthew Savich. Oh, Matt Matt Chu. Yeah, Matt Chu say Vich. Bitch. Matt Chu say Vich. Matty yeah. Chavich. <laughs> Matt I think you just. I think he just. Sold somebody egg noodles that were made by Manise- Manishevich. <laughs> Jesus, I'm all forgetting right. that now. I'll keep working on it. I'll I'll, I'll continue to work on it. Uh, all right. So, how long are they over there in Spain, Buzz? Two weeks, basically. Yeah, okay. they're playing. They're playing three games that we know of. Um, from experience in these kind of environments, there often will be um, official games scheduled that are part of the quote unquote, you know, event that they're in. Um, and then they will sometimes just wrangle up other scrimmages against teams that happen to be in the area that don't quite get the full like official treatment that some of the other games will get. Now the difference is almost meaningless other than one, one set of them is publicized and one set of them is not. I'll give you an example. This happened twice uh, when, that I've personally witnessed is in La Manga one time they would play a certain set of games that were part of these quote La Manga Cup and that you were trying to win that cup and yet they played another five or six games outside of that cup against teams. And then the same thing in Arizona. When they go out to Arizona and they do the Sun Cup Challenge, there's a certain slate of the games that are part of that Sun Cup Challenge, which Dallas actually won last time they did it. Then there's a slate of games that are just pickup scrimmages against other teams that may or may not have referees or even a college team. So it's uh, the three we know about are on the, have been announced and talked about, and it's possible that there'll be other ones we don't know about. And the, the whole point is that um, all trainings are behind closed doors. They'll be, that's why they'll do some of these other scrimmages is because they can be behind closed doors. Whereas these three official games, as near as we can tell are available for public consumption via tickets. They are not, however, available for stream or watching. So unless you're there, you can't watch them. So, you know, I saw you uh, tweet out that they had made an, I guess they made an official announcement that everything was closed to the media. That was in the weekly media release they put out to media people that tells you the schedule of training. So I just thought it made me chuckle that they bothered to actually tell everybody that the training sessions were closed as if there's any media left other than me that would actually go to something like this in another country and I'm not going. So it's, right. I just thought it was funny. Well, the reason why I, no, I, I serious question do you think seriously that if you had sent a, an email or made a phone call to them and said, hey, I'm going to Spain, I'm going to be there, they wouldn't negotiate or work a deal with you to let you go to training or watch or do something or give you some sort of pre-agreed? Or are they really, and I'm not, this may not be limited just to Dallas, but are all MLS clubs these days that hard up on trying to keep all this content for themselves? I don't know. Um, the last time I went to one of these things was pre COVID um, and it was in Arizona. And at that point when Lucci was in charge, they would still let me go to all the training sessions. Um, I would imagine with this particular coach, I would have to ask him first if it was okay. Um, 
he and I have a decent relationship, but it's not like the other coaches we've had here where it's like 10 years old. and they He hasn't me. bought you lunch. Yeah, he hasn't bought me lunch. I mean, <laughs> it may be that we have a relationship now that he would allow me to do that. He has allowed me to come to closed sessions when I have a legitimate reason why I couldn't come to the open one. Yeah. You know, a couple of times, but I have to ask specifically. So if I asked specifically, if I come to Spain, could I watch? He, maybe, but he also talked about wanting to be able to work on stuff when no one can see them. So it's possible that he would say, no, I, I don't know yet. I've never pushed that envelope yet. So hmm. okay. um, if, if I felt like I could go to Spain, I would have tried to ask, but I couldn't like if, if they go somewhere domestic again, I will try and see. Yeah. Well, I, I, and it's, I don't know. I, it's just weird to me. I'm a part of this and we'll get into the Apple TV stuff here later is just how much of this closing of stuff is them trying to retain all the content for themselves. And which seems short sighted in its own, uh, way, but I just, or is I, I it know. just them trying to protect their super secret tactical well, plan? Well, Nico's pretty uh, old school, you know, in terms of coming from the national team and coming from Spain, that all sessions should be closed. So it's actually good that he doesn't do that 100% here yet. I mean, they easily could. There's a lot of clubs in this league that are 100% closed all the time. Um, I mean, I, I would hope that I have a good enough relationship with him that I could ask him if it comes up. But, uh, you know, until then, and I'm sort of happy that we still get two days sometimes. It's not the days I would like it to be, but it's still better than nothing. Okay. Well, I guess we'll uh, wait for information to flow over from uh, Europe and find out how things go and, and games progress. When's the first game? I'm sorry. I hope you didn't already say this. Uh, yeah, I did not say. One thing you can do is that Garrett Melker, who writes for the team, is kind of doing what I used to do, which is kind of like a blog of what they're doing and traveling and, you know, basically borrowing my bit. Not that anyone there remembers that bit because it's been a decade. But Yeah, I don't think I don't think Garrett was even no, no. born at that point. Yeah, he might not have been. Um, but, you know, so at least you're going to get some information out of him. Now, granted, he works for the team, so it's going to be, you know, team – messaging and and he's a he knows his soccer though so you know go go read it and see what he says i mean you know he's not going to blast somebody like i might but where's you know, are they posting it on the site or yeah, on his twitter on, account the or first what? one for the first full day went up i think they put it up yesterday i think so there might right now there might be a second one are, by are we getting a this. tiktok video on a daily basis or something like that uh they did distribute um media interviews which i put on my patreon uh you know coach and player interview uh, paxton and, and and nico from the first day over there so you know they're doing some. You know, Dan, that gives me an idea. You should take over ownership and uh, control of and um, posting to the third degree TikTok account. I watch TikTok. I've never once posted on it. Yeah. Okay. I just think that so would be good that'd content. That would be kind of useless. No. <laughs> you, <laughs> if you want to, Dan, you certainly can. You could do it. <laughs> I'm good. I'm I think, good. and I encourage all the third degree listeners and readers to encourage you to do that so contact See, dan crook on all of his social media outlets and tell him he should be doing tiktok videos for buzz TikTok for me is is dog videos comedy and that's a, that's really it, actually no you could do like uh, informational and educational fc dallas burn videos while you do like little hand dances and put your hands <laughs> out and then words appear <laughs> above them and stuff yeah but like greg abbott can confiscate my phone or something you know you go like <laughs> Mid block, you know, you'd put your hands out, ta da, mid block, and then the word mid block would appear above your hands, and then a graphic would appear over your right shoulder of what a mid block looks like, and then you could explain it. I think that would be good. Or we could just do it on YouTube, honestly. I think TikTok's <laughs> the place all the kids are at these days, man. We got to go to where the kids are. I do put my well, uh, instant, creepy. instant reactions on there. That did sound a little weird, Dan. <laughs> we we got to put the content. Where the next generation Actually, of consumers are gathering. Funny, funny story about TikTok's algorithm. I still get uh, Buzz's Minnesota uh, instant reaction popping up on my feed constantly. Why Minnesota? Because it's the last one? Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. Maybe it's because it's the last one. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, I was just... I was just jazzing, uh, brainstorming for an idea. All right. So uh, when did you say, Buzz, the games are? Oh, I didn't. Uh, I don't have it in front of me. I'm okay, Dan, do you know? It, so. They're playing Malmo on Friday at 9 a.m. Chunbuk Hyundai? Something. Do we need to do the Sesame Street bit for you? It probably, yeah. A uh, Korean Cor Cor side um, on the 6th, and they're going to play Hammerby on the 9th. And then I think they come back on the 10th, right? 
Well, while we're on this topic, I actually want to get a little soapboxy about the schedule, the spring schedule. Well, first off, before you get into your rant, yeah, Buzz, uh, I'm assuming we are of uh, a, b- a belief that none of those games are going to be available via stream to watch or anything like that. Confirmed. Team said no. Uh, they do definitely have streaming capacity there. Marbella Football Center has streamed games in the past, but they uh, they did actually list... Normally, they sell tickets uh, for like 10 euros. They even... On their latest thing, they said that these games are closed. Oh, there you go. Hmm. Good okay. thing I didn't go. Bang. All right. Dan, have a seat. I'm going to sit down. I'm going <laughs> to listen to Buzz. Uh, I'm just going his... to paint the, the soapbox for Buzz to stand okay. on. Yeah. Right. Very good. Uh, well, this is actually... Uh, I'm going to actually give them some credit. You remember that uh, the last two seasons, now coming out of the pandemic... The first preseason after that, they just did kind of this local stuff. And we all understood that. They played Houston. They played San Antonio. They played Austin, right? That way we were like, okay, it's a pandemic. And then the second year they did it again. And I absolutely blasted them because I was like, this is utter garbage. This is the worst. I said it was the worst preseason I've ever seen. And I, and that turned out to be true. And the team stunk up the joint to start the season. And they have not done a good job with the preseason since then. But this is better. This is much, much, much better. You, you're you playing a teams like Barcelona, which just fell into the lap, quite frankly, but good for them. And then going overseas, away from everybody, including us, away from everybody together, and playing a slate of games like this is phenomenal. Playing teams you've never seen, players you've never seen, a style of play you've never seen, leagues you've never seen – is so massively important to put your team under stress to get them prepared for playing uh, in Major League Soccer season. This is they've been abs- since the pandemic. The Dallas preseason has been absolute garbage, absolute junk in terms of their value to the team. They're worthless. This is so so much better, and I'm so glad that they've chosen to do this. Whether it was Nico that chose to do it, or whether somebody over there finally remembered, hey, didn't we used to do that? And they sort of put it together. It's invaluable, and so this time my rant is actually 100% in terms of full credit to them. Now, the final tune-up against Houston still sucks, but it's better than nothing. But when you add in these other four games, the Barcelona game and these three games, tremendous, just so much better. When is that Houston game, do you know? It's the weekend before the last for the season opener, basically. They're going to Houston, and they're playing. It's a closed-door scrimmage, so you can't see it. So they're going to have kind of a week, week and a half, just kicking around before that then. Yeah, they'll probably be, I would imagine, some kind of inner squad scrimmage, or maybe they'll sneak in. Because they did say when they made the announcement of the spring schedule, the games when they got back were going to be TBD. I imagine that they'll roll in a, you know, second team group or maybe a USL club, you know, somebody in that same window. They won't want to sit around and do nothing. You know, they might even be fairly aggressive about it and play a couple of games. But, you know, the thing that'll salvage the spring and make this a really good spring is these games over in Europe against European competition and the Barcelona game here. Even though those teams are all also in their spring training, it's a thousand times better than playing just local USL and just local MLS sides, so half of whom are either really bad or, you know, running out reserve teams or whatever. They've just been absolute garbage preseasons the last few years. And so credit to them for fixing that problem. And here's hoping whatever scrimmages and they have on the training field, they let us come to. That would be nice. I'm not going to hold my breath, but it would be cool if we could get one more viewing. And if, be- if they want to make one on a weekend, that would be so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> well, the just- Houston one will be the, roughly the 18th uh, down in Houston. It, they, it's posted in the schedule. I just didn't look because I can't go because so, yeah. so, they won't let us. But. Oh, no. The, yeah, they're going to get back the 11th. Ah, screw yeah. it. Okay, well, probably not. Yeah, damn it. You feel like you feel better now, Buzz? You got that off your chest? I, I do because I honestly was so mad about it last time, if you remember, and this time it's way better. And so I try to be fair, man. When they do good work, we tell them that. This is great. It's so good. Yeah, those the trips to Chile, this is something the club's done for 20 years. They Bobby Hammond told me about going to some island off of Greece when they in like 96 or 97. I went to Chile. I went to Spain, to La Manga. I went to England with the team. They've gone to Brazil for a couple of years. A few years ago, um, they went to somebody somewhere over there in Europe again. Or it was before. If you go to Florida or you go to Arizona, those are okay. 
but it's still mostly domestic teams. It's not as good as these foreign teams, these unfamiliar teams, these teams that force you to think on the field because there's going to be no scouting. You're not going to get a scouting report. It's go out there and play the way we want to play, adapt to what you see in front of you, flexing the brain, right? Massive. So good. Hmm. Okay. What was the best trip you ever took with the club? Uh, in terms of the games or the enjoyment? No, of just the overall experience, I guess. Probably the one that was, uh, well, the one to Chile was way outside my comfort zone, and that probably was good for me as a human being. The, some of the, the games they played there were just off the charts weird. Um, the one that was a combination of Spain and England with Colin Clark was a lot of fun because that went to, um, we were staying in, in, in Spain. It was at La Manga, of course, again. And then in England, it was at Portsmouth. Uh, and we got to go up to London and went to a Chelsea game. I think it was against West Ham Chelsea game with the staff. That was fun. A couple of players went along too. took the subway around London and then did some sightseeing on a day off too with, with Oscar in London, Oscar and Bobby Hammond. Uh, so that was cool. So that was a good trip. Um, personally, a lot of fun. That was the trip where, um, I got to do some hanging out with some of the players in around town and stuff. Cause most of the time, um, on those trips, they, when I'm on by myself, like well, nowadays, if I follow the team, I'm not allowed to go to any team things, you know, cause they keep that stuff private. But back then they were much more open about it. And they invited me to, you know, go out with the guys or, or go to a dinners or go into town or whatever. It was a lot of fun. Hmm. You actually got to see Chelsea before they got owned by a pair of supervillains. Yeah, that's true. That's the one English ground I've been to is, is there, there. It's a cool. I have some pictures and stuff of that. Uh, that was a lot of fun. My, the, my favorite game I went to the whole time was when, and I've told this story before, was when uh, the burn tied Dinamo Kiev uh, and Dinamo was so mad, so pissed. They could not believe they got tied by this piece of crap American, in their minds, American team. Uh, I've never seen some, a team so mad in the preseason. That was a lot of fun, that one. No. Uh, it's fun reflecting on the old days, which is actually a really nice segue to the next topic, which is today marks the day of the launch of the highly anticipated uh, experiment, as I'm calling it, between MLS and Apple TV. Um, I don't know where to start on it. I mean, I, I, I think the reason why I thought this was a nice seg is because I have to say I sat down and I watched the FC Dallas, you know, I was kind of perusing through all the FC Dallas content they've posted up there and I was watching the team profile and immediately was thrown off by the fact that the co-host of my radio show, Andy Swift is uh, certainly featured predominantly <laughs> yeah. in it, and I had no idea he had done it. So he will get called out for ticket non-disclosure on Saturday's live radio show because yeah. I had no idea he'd done that. But I have to say that video uh, is like 20 minutes long. I think it does a really nice job of kind of uh, capsulizing the history of the club, you know, in a bit of a polished way, um, especially when it refers to South Lake as a uh suburban football facility yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's you caught that yeah <laughs> oh my gosh i had to stop yeah. and wipe the tears it made me laugh so hard yeah it's <laughs> the, the 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 burn left to the cotton bowl for one year at a yeah. at a suburb it didn't didn't they say suburban football fa- isn't yeah. that how they described a high school stadium yeah they, they it did. was yeah. very funny um, but I, I just seeing all the old footage, seeing Mark Dodd, seeing Jason Christ play again, that yeah. goal Graziani scores is a really nice one uh, they showed uh, in the box. I don't know. It was a it was a great uh, look of the video, and I I really liked it. Uh, I mean, it was a good way to at least start the experiment, as far as I was concerned. Yeah, it's it's much better than the the one Houston and the one Austin put together. You know, it's. Dallas has a fair bit of good history at their disposal, and they did a nice job with it. It's really well done. Um, there's a whole bunch of player profiles, too, in there. You have to sort of go to that section and dig through them all because they, they don't really separate them by team. But um, there's like seven or eight player FC Dallas player profile features, which are cool. Yeah, lots of good content. Uh, I want Dan was on the conference call and got a lot of good information about it. But I, I, the one thing I want to say about it is people so far today have been – raving about all the storytelling going on in this thing. And I think it's hysterical that <laughs> because the teams themselves are doing all the storytelling, this is something they could have been doing for 27 years now. Yeah. And I, I've always tried to say to them, 
you know, your insider access, your behind the scenes, your ability to tell stories, your ability to let people feel like they're intimately getting to know these players. So that's your the thing that you have that nobody else can do, and they never have done it for squat. And now all of a sudden they're doing it on this Apple TV deal, and it's fantastic. You know, they got a ways to go in terms of their big picture storytelling, probably, but um, it's great. I can't. I hope they got a lot more of it to come. Okay. Dan, as Buzz said, you were on the uh, press conference call earlier this week about the whole thing. Anything in particular from that that stood out to you or you learned something new that we didn't already know? Uh, uh, let me think. Um, no, I mean, it, it was just kind of like a briefing and then a walkthrough of the uh, the Apple TV 4K version. Um, I mean, you know, anyone that's used ESPN Plus, Apple TV Plus, any of those streaming services, you already kind of, you can close your eyes and picture what it will look like. Uh, I did like there was some some cool little things. Um, there's a like a drone tour of all of the new stadiums. So no Toyota Stadium, obviously. Um, there's there's some pretty good hidden content there. You have to dig around a little bit for um, the Little jet thing. Yeah, the legit thing I thought was really cool. I found what's that. the legit thing? I haven't heard. I haven't seen it. There's a series called Beyond the Pitch, which talks about uh, just what, what players do outside of the game. And uh, for his, it was about uh, his investment business that he started. So it was a lot of you know him talking. There were some really cool little B roll clips of uh, of him on an astroturf field, kind of you know dicking around with a ball. Uh, there was one where it's like cuts four four pictures of him simultaneously um lots of becky g lots of becky g yeah that was that was uh that was a good move by them uh but yeah it was it was, it was pretty cool um just to see you know these guys out outside of the game some of them it's going to be more about their philanthropic endeavors i assume but uh uh one one thing i guess uh that that hasn't really come up too much. Uh, it was actually one the the guy from Apple was really excited about. If you go to any of the game screens uh, for like you know um, for games that haven't happened yet, the background is whatever stadium it's going to be played at. So they were really excited to show that the nice. season opening game at the uh, El Trafico that's going to be played at the Rose Bowl was a picture of the Rose Bowl. Oh, cool! Uh, that's a nice detail. It, Toyota Stadium looks looks pretty cool in in those pictures. Uh, yeah, I mean, this just just seems like a really a, a good start to it with a lot of off season content, which makes sense. You've you've kind of got to entice people to subscribe with a, a month, well, almost a month to go. Yeah. So, um, Buzz, did you dig around it at all today? I did, and in fact, you know, I had a an Apple TV account from when I watched Ted Lasso, and I found the whole thing just super easy sign up for i mean I, I got the email from the team you know and it was like a couple of clicks later and it just automatically oh because you're a season great. ticket holder yeah so you know it was nice and i got in there and tried to find every dallas video i could and i even like i said i watched a little of the houston and the austin and it, it's great it was easy to set up both on my on, computer uh, and then on my roku tv also easy to set up just on, had to do the little usual um you know web uh uh not approval but um I can't, yeah yeah, when you scan the QR code and then enter a yeah. number or whatever, I just did that and it popped in. Well, all great, no problem. Yes. On that note, there is a new Patreon level where you can be one of Buzz's <laughs> five uh, Apple family members. <laughs> sure, yeah. There's a price for that. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking you just let me borrow it, Buzz. Oh. Put me on your friends list or your family. Well, now that we've admitted list. that on the podcast, I don't know that we can. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You'll get the uh, Apple TV Plus subscriber rate of twelve ninety nine. Well, yeah. Dan got a free one for being on that conference call, so you can. Uh, share you know, it with I him. haven't received the email about it. The email just said you would. I would be receiving one today, and I'm. Um, granted, yesterday they sent the images for the uh, embargoed stuff at like six thirty p.m. So, uh, you know, I, 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 everything's running on uh, Pacific Standard Time, apparently. Yeah, yeah, it's it's an interesting deal because if you work inside the Apple ecosystem, the way they're managing the sharing of the account is through uh, what they call family sharing. Now, the only way to do family sharing is within an iOS product, like you, or you have to go into your iCloud account on line via the web because you're going to have to create 
a an Apple account to do this, whether you own an Apple device or subscribe to Apple TV at all. You're just because that's how the uh, the the subscription to MLS season pass is going to work. Sure. And so, you know, it's not like you can just give somebody your uh, Apple ID and password. You're going to have to be set up in their family sharing component of that account. And typically you do that on your iPhone or your iPad or, or whatever. So it will be interesting to see how well that works. Or uh, in, in Dan's case, if they give you a free account, if you'll be able to set that up similarly. I, oh. I, I, well, go ahead. I was going to say, I mean, we we'll use my missus' uh, Apple account for everything, uh, for our Apple TV and everything. Oh, I don't, okay. I mean, I'm, I, you know, I, other than owning a MacBook a few years ago, I don't, I've, you know, never really done the Apple, oh, and, a, and an iPod Touch way back when. Uh, I haven't really done the Apple Sweet. devices, but, um, you know, navigating it on the web view at uh, tv.apple.com on my phone is it's pretty good uh on a windows pc likewise easy to get around uh yeah i mean the usability the usability actually weirdly from people talking in discord it seems like the usability of the uh the website on on mobile is easier than the app in some ways you just there's a hamburger menu top left and it literally says apple tv plus mls that's it yeah. just all your options yeah, I'm sure it's uh yeah, um, my digging around in it today uh through the free access is that it's a very, you know, uh, very Apple-like experience. I mean, if you've ever used Apple TV whether you're a a Plus subscriber or not, uh it's very much that same tile-based system and very smooth and in in their typical way. It I am uh, I, you know, one of the longstanding questions I had was whether or not this was going to be its own standalone application, like you'd go s download it separately from Apple TV. No, it is inside the Apple TV app. So uh, un unless you're on an Android handheld device, um, you can download the Apple TV app. If you're using an Android mobile device, you have to do it through the website. But uh, it looks good. Uh, you know, my one concern, and this has been my concern all along when we announced it, is, is I'm just worried it's too expensive. One. And two, I think there is a ex an exorbitant amount of market confusion. I was trading messages with somebody today who's got to be the fifth or sixth person that's like, yeah, I'm not signing up for Apple TV Plus just so I can also then pay for um you know mls and i'm like you don't have yeah. to do that you know and oh i'm never going to buy an apple product you don't have to buy an apple product you, it's you know kind of hard just the way the apple name things i saw someone actually put a tweet out that was like apple tv 4k is a device apple tv is an app yeah. apple tv plus is a service they are all different things and uh yeah it's it's definitely been there's definitely a lot of people that are talking about oh yeah this is on apple tv plus no it's not um, oh, I don't want to subscribe to Apple TV Plus as well as MLS Season Pass. That's great. You don't have to. Um, so yeah, uh, that that. Well, that, you know, it look it it's part of uh, you know uh, customer conversion and all that stuff uh, is is it's problematic and it, it feels almost like when uh, when Apple had to rename the operating system to Mac OS because people kept getting OS X and iOS confused that at some point they're going to have to do something like that again, but with their, their screaming service. Yeah. I, you know, it's interesting just to kind of ponder how they'll, um, um, how this is going to work or what kind of conversion rate, you know, I read somewhere in a press release earlier today that they're anticipating that they'll automatically get somewhere between three and 400,000 subscribers, which are the free subscribers because they're like Buzz, they're season ticket holders. And this isn't dissimilar to how Apple announced uh, their quote unquote success with uh, Apple TV plus the subscription service uh, about a year after launch, because what, you know, quietly everybody wasn't paying attention to is that if you bought a brand new iPhone, iPad, or any kind of Apple device in that year, you got free access to Apple TV plus. That's how they, you know, uh, gin those numbers up and nobody ever really quite knew if they had just to make up a number, a million subscribers, what percentage of those were subscribers that got it for free because they had bought a, a hard, a product. And I suspect that's what will happen at the end of the season is they'll say, we've got X hundred thousand number of subscribers and we don't really know how many of them actually paid for it. 
My big concern with this whole thing is uh, the casual watcher, the, which is important for audience building. We're trying to grow your game. Like I, my in-laws, for example, are a perfect example of casual watchers. They, they live in Washington, so they like to watch Seattle a little bit. They like to watch FC Dallas a little bit because of me. They like to watch the Rapids a little bit because their other daughter lives uh, in Denver. So they, they liked occasionally to watch major league soccer games. And the first thing that happened today when was that they called to be, to be like, Hey, does this mean I can't watch MLS anymore? And I was like, well, no, there's going to be this Fox FS one, you know, game of the week kind of thing. So you'll be able to see some of it, you know? So thank God for that in terms of like, if you're a league that's still trying to grow, which this league clearly is and clearly needs to be, there's some concerns here for me about audience building and finding your people <laughs> and the people that live in your market and the ability to watch your team's games. So this is not ideal for that, for that purpose. Yeah. That's, that's my big concern out of this is, is that it's priced and built for MLS nerds. Uh, and, uh, you know, somebody said, well, you can get up to six games a week for free. If you're just an Apple TV plus subscriber, like if you subscribe so you can get Ted Lasso and, and uh, Succession and all those, sh not Succession, um, whatever, other Apple TV shows, uh, and not MLS, you'll get like six games a week for free. And if you don't subscribe to anything, you can get uh, an unknown number of games for free completely just by logging or, you know, logging into the Apple uh, TV application. And I suspect at best that'll be one game a week, um, not more, because... You know, already it's six games a week for an Apple TV Plus subscriber that is not a season pass subscriber. That's already half of a slate of a weekend's worth of games right there that they're just giving away. I think Severance was the show you were looking for. Severance, thank you. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you. Yeah, there's concerns. I mean, look, there's there's multiple ways to get it still, right? I mean, you can get you, you can be content with the with the over the air. I say over the air. I don't. You know, Fox is only some of Fox is over the air. But, you know, they, they're not a balanced slate of games on that. It's, you know, those are stacked for <clears throat> your L.A.'s and your Seattle's and your New York's and your big attention team, your Atlanta's. You know, there's not right. like there's a couple of MLS teams that have one game or none. You know, I think Dallas only has one or two. So it's like that's not ideal in terms of building your crowd. You know, if you're they need to think about a way to reach your local audience. As you said, Peter, I can't believe there's not a team specific version of this. Like why is the only version, the league version, where's the $7 FC Dallas only version? Well, I, I assume they're testing the market, you know, to see what they can squeeze out at, at, at a max price. And maybe that's something that comes, you know, if things don't go well, I'll yeah, also fair. state, I'll also say for the record, I know this is supposedly a 10 year deal. I'm just telling you right now, there is absolutely no way in the world uh, either Apple and, well, specifically Apple and probably MLS didn't put some sort of triggering effect to get everybody out of this thing if it doesn't go well a after disaster. a certain amount of time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, there's just no way they're all locking in however many billions of dollars if after two or three seasons, you know, 80% of their subscriber base is season ticket holders, right? They're not making yeah. any money from that. So it would, um, it would stun me in particular if there's not one after the World Cup. Right, uh, that there's not a World Cup bounce get out if yeah. all of a sudden your audience explodes and MLS is like, well, now we can get ten billion yeah. instead of two. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it would make sense to do a team specific one like at nine dollars, where it's you know it's Something. less of enough a cost where you're like, okay, I'm saving some money, but close enough to full price. We're like, okay, it's five more dollars to get the entire league. Let me just pay for the whole thing, right? And that. That, it's kind of like how they price the annual versus the monthly. Another thing I wanted to ask you guys, and I asked Andy this on the radio show last week, is part of me is wondering if one of the um, things to pay attention to for this, because if you once you're going streaming like this, you're not worried about TV ratings anymore, which is a big component of the fear factor for owners, which is... Uh, you know, how this plays in terms of TV ratings and revenue, all of that. But once you put this thing inside of a sandbox, is it possible that this type of setup is the beginning elements 
for the idea that maybe possibly MLS figures out how to do, even if it's in their own sandboxed format that everybody would still bitch about, some version of promotion relegation, especially if they merge with Liga MX and they have too many teams that there's no way to do a single league. But having everything behind a paywall where you're not worried about, you know, oh, my team got relegated, now I don't have a place to broadcast their games that's worth anything. I do begin to wonder if that's the beginning seeds of how behind closed doors in New York they're trying to figure that component out. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, at the prices people are paying to get teams in this league, I don't think anyone wants to be, even if it's only an MLS 1, MLS 2, I don't think you're going to be able to convince the owner, half the owners to say, oh, yeah, I'll take a shit sandwich and, stay, and start out in League 2. But why is it? A, but why you would know? it be a shit sandwich in in that case? Because you're not, you know, it's not a function of you're all working under the same. It's not like you're gonna not gonna get the ESPN game of the week at all, and you're or you're on you're you're buried on you know at, well, at FS2. Yeah, but the the perception would be that the good teams are all in one, and the bad teams are all in MLS two. Why would I watch the bad teams? I'm just gonna watch good teams. I can't win a championship in MLS two. I can only win a championship in MLS one. You know, it's the same as it is now. Oh, I'm not watching MLS. That shit sucks, right? I'm not watching MLS two. That's terrible. I'm not watching Next Pro. That's terrible, right? Nobody wants to watch the crap. Everyone wants to watch the good. So, well, no, I agree with you, but that's my point, yeah. Buzz. Is that because you're in a because you're behind a paywall? Everybody's paying for it anyway. It's not like you're paying. It's not like you have to pay to watch MLS two or or you or one or the other. You're paying a flat fee for access to all of it. Yeah, sure. But I, I was thinking beyond the TV part. I'm thinking of like, well, why would I spend a million dollars on your jersey sponsorship when you're in MLS two? Why would I sponsor stuff at your stadium when you're in MLS two, not MLS one? You know, you can just see, I can see it hurting business across the board for literally half the teams in the league in a league that already doesn't make any money or most teams don't make any money. I just can't, I can't fathom these billionaire owners just voluntarily being, oh, I'll go to the league. It's not as good. Because even if you did, even if you didn't have to do just volunteers, if you said, okay, this is the pinnacle season. At the end of this season, the bottom 10 teams are going down in each division, you know, they half the owners would lose their mind about mm-hmm. that, you know, unless you remove the problem of uh, the money part of it. And that's where I just, yeah, well, that's, this is the money world we live in. This is why we don't have permission and relegation in the first place. Oh no. But that's what I'm saying because if yeah. this is their own little sandbox thing, maybe they can figure out a way that they don't lose revenue in that, in that way. I mean, they may, they may, they may struggle in this, in an attendance or something. I don't know. It's Still just the money, thought. Yeah. 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 Uh, Dan, would you like to throw any crazy bon mot to that thought process or idea or topic? Uh, no, sorry. I fell asleep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's always going to be a hard discussion. I, um, yeah, you, it's, it's hard cause you, you're comparing to no matter what you're comparing to Peacock and you get the whole premier league for, you know, your five or $10 and, uh, ESPN Plus, where you used to get everything in the world for for five dollars, um, you know, for me, I, I look back at MLS Live, which was like eighty, ninety dollars a year. Uh, I look at EFL, I follow as you know, I have to have that for looting games and just just looting. That's one hundred and eighty five dollars a year. You know, for me, like the uh, the 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 cost of MLS season pass is is pretty. Not you know it's not terrible as a as somebody who's invested in the league. Um, certainly in in trying to attract new fans, that's where they're going to have the problem. Um, I will say it looks like uh, Apple's kind of nudging uh, some market and stuff. Like I saw tweets from WWE and other uh, since they have uh, the Irish fella that does the Atlanta United games. That's now going to go on to Apple. Uh, he works for them too, uh, and that's you know that's that's mentioned in MLS to another thirteen million social media users who wouldn't have seen that yesterday. Um, uh, you know, maybe just the marketability of Apple is is gonna is gonna be what kind of bridges that gap compared to the price. 
Yeah, I, I, well, I think Apple will be patient. Apple always tends to push a premium pricing structure. That's just how they. It's worked well for them, and maybe it will in this case. I just, man, it's it, questions. I, I, yeah, yeah, I, I got a thousand questions, yep. and I certainly and I'm a I'm a staunch believer in that. Whether you like soccer, hate MLS. Or what? If you like any sport, you should be paying attention to what is happening here because this is an experiment that Netflix, Amazon, um, uh, uh, all the other streaming services are watching. HBO are all trying to figure out because oh, if yeah. Apple can if Apple can successfully turn this into a real business, imagine what any of those companies could do if they got their hands on the NFL baseball, basketball, et cetera. Yeah, it's the leagues too. MLB, NHL, NBA, all three in particular are watching closely because of the dying of the um, regional sports networks. You know, Sinclair, a.k.a. Bally's group that owns all those networks is sure. looking like they're going into um, bankruptcy. So they're watching this stuff. Those leagues are watching this stuff closely because it would be more difficult because all the contracts are different and none of them align like MLS made their teams do. Mm -hmm. But... They're all watching, for sure. It's going to be an interesting season, and as we play out, I mean, there's a whole. I, I, I uh, there's a part of me that wants to go through a, ML, a an FC Dallas season, where I, you know, I don't go to games very much anymore. Um, I don't have season tickets, and I've always historically depended on the games being on TX uh, twenty one. Well, I'm there's a there's a part of me that wants to run my own experience experiment this year which is I don't subscribe to the service and I don't have season tickets and I try to follow this club just to see what that experience is like now I don't think I have the willpower to, to not do something that gives me access to this club on a regular basis but it would be interesting to be just kind of a general base uh, soccer fan and an FC Dallas curious person and see how difficult it is to follow this club unless you spend at, at a minimum 80 bucks. Well, it's quite easy, Peter. You just follow third degree on Instagram and Twitter and uh, website that may be podcast. One. Yes. <laughs> that may be. That's on Patreon. That's my commercial. Yeah. That <laughs> yeah, may be on the Patreon. There you go. That may be the way to do it. You could be a lot less expensive yeah. by giving buzz five bucks a month uh, or whatever it is than uh, Apple 80 bucks. Uh, well, a it's year. five for the discord, but it's a dollar. Just get in the Patreon. That's true. Yeah. And Twitter's free. That's true. Yeah, that's right. Twitter for now. Is? Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm not paying no eight bucks for a, I've never had a blue check. I don't need one now. That's a, that a boy buzz. Yep. Okay. Um, well, so if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. If you don't have a device, I think Dan said it's uh, tv.apple.com, and then you can find the little uh, header in the menu for the Apple TV thing and uh, see what you think. The, the, the profile in particular is good content. Um, good stuff. Good yeah, and them. matter of fact, I believe they have a trial so for like a week, so you could actually sign up and watch all the fun content they made of FC Dallas, and then not sign up. You know, if you just want to see the stuff they did. I well, I actually think it's all free right now. I don't have, uh, I, you know, until the opening first weekend. Yeah, 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 and all I think all the games, the entire slate of first weekend games, are going to be free inside the Apple TV app. So yeah, you don't have to sign up for anything now. Give them your credit card well, and cancel it later. Anything if you're like hardcore, that. they got a bunch of games from last season. They have all the old MLS cups <laughs> on <around> there. <laughs> yes. I have to give full credit to Sam on your Discord, who today yeah. went back and rewatched the sadness, which is MLS Cup 2010, yeah. and did like a, uh, a live tweeting or a live commenting inside your Discord channel today <laughs> as he proceeded to watch through that doom and gloom, yeah. super cold moment in our all of our yeah. history. That was, a, that was a good, fun thing to follow along with. That was very... Very, very funny. Watching him uh, fall apart as the game went on was hysterical. Yes. <laughs> For those that it. Yeah. He, he made a comment in the first half about how Connor Casey had just trucked uh, uh, George John, and I was like, yeah. oh, you just hold on a few minutes, sir. Yeah. Just give yourself about, mm, I don't know, another 53 <laughs> minutes, and if you think it's bad now. <laughs> he was yelling, how does he not have a yellow card? And I was like, ah. we were asking the same question at the time. Yeah. Yeah. It was the coldest I've ever been yeah. uh, in my entire life was that night in Toronto. I forgot you were there. Yeah, I was there. And then after the game, Andy and I met down in the hallway outside the locker room. And I'll never forget, this is seared into my brain. The door cracked open 
and we got a peek inside the locker room post game and i'm telling you i have never experienced a just a, a pure wall of sadness as i oh, did yeah. uh, coming out of that room i've been to funerals that have been more lively Oof. than that scene that was the saddest scene i'd ever seen in my entire life i will never ever ever forget it uh what a night i hope yep. i get to experience another mls cup someday uh, fingers crossed. Uh, okay. What else, Buzz? Anything else you want to talk about? Yeah, the CONCACAF U-17 World Cups, not World Cups, excuse me, CONCACAF championships are coming up first uh, in March, basically, or end of February, one or the other, I don't remember. What's important is that there are guys from the FC Dallas Academy that will be in some of those teams. The first one that was named today is Malachi Molina, who's been named to the Jamaica U-17 team for that CONCACAF championship. What's funny about him in particular is that Jamaica – basically just pulled in every guy they could possibly think of for like a month and a half in Jamaica and camp. He's been gone since like the early January. Uh, and I was even talking to Chris Hayden about it. He was complaining about how Malachi has been gone so, so long, but kid made the Jamaica U 17 team for the CONCACAF championships. And there's a couple other guys that have a shot. So if they make them, we'll give them a shout out. So uh, Malachi has been a high on my list of potential future homegrowns for some time. He's still a U 17. So not a big rush. He's this typical uh, flank winger now, probably more of a right back, sort of similar in vein to Brian Reynolds-ish in style and athleticism, that kind of player. So he's one to watch for sure with Jamaica. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? Dan, going once? Going uh, twice? Uh, Are you tending to your beard, uh, sir? Uh. I mean, I'm playing with it, but not tending to it. <laughs> Do you play with your beard like you play with a puppy? No, I'm just okay. fidgety. Oh, you just fidget with it. Okay, all right. Like a built-in fidget widget. He twirls it like it's an evil mustache. <laughs> he does. Uh, that, that, that's happened, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, you were super evil today, and I love you for it. Um, I didn't our... do anything. I know you didn't. You're perfect. Pe You're... People were defending my honor. And That's I appreciate right. Them. And and uh, and and well, we all should. Um, okay. Well, I'm gonna take that. Dan is busy tending to his beard and uh, has no other, no other content. Buzz, you ready to go? Go eat dinner. Yeah, yeah I, I'm. I can hear it clicking in the other room. It's almost ready. <laughs> all right, Christoph Matty Skewich. No, Matty Skewich. No, Wait, you screw up. <laughs> yeah. Christoph. Right, we'll, give, we'll give you an easier name next week. No, no, wait. Mm -hmm. I want to get this right. Repronounce the last name, please, Dan. Christoph Matisiewicz. 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 There's an SK in there. It's Polish. All right. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is random letters. Just so the listener knows, this thing is spelled M A T Y S K I E W I C Z. And you're saying that's pronounced Matis... Matusiewicz. Matusiewicz. Yeah. I believe it's All pronounced right. Krzyzewski. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's actually... It's pronounced Johnson. <laughs> yeah. All so, right. um, with, with that, I remember um, saying earlier I did PA announcing for a game where it was like all the players had like Polish or... Um, or Latvian names, and I asked this one guy like how he said his name because it had like a, it had a random Z in it, and he just looks at me like I'm a complete fucking idiot and goes, "Istrelecki." That's it's the the Z is silent. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was asking you. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Third degree. The podcast has been brought to you by Soccer90.com. Soccer90.com, 20% off all third degree listeners. Code third degree, you know it, 3RDDEGREE. -E. Use that at checkout. FC Dallas gear, national team gear, international gear. Get that North Texas Soccer Club gear. Come out and support the developmental team. I'll tell you, you'd love it. It's great soccer. Third degree is the code, soccer90.com. Get yourself some gear. Hey, everybody thinks there's an H in my name, so I get it. I totally get it. And Peter? Um, no, in Welpton. They think it's oh. W-H-E-L-P, and it's not. <clears throat> well, anyway. Yeah. Super boring. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks, gentlemen. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Thank you, Buzz. Yeah, thank you, Peter. All right. Thank you, uh, good FC Dallas Curious fan. We will speak to you next week on another episode of Third Degree, the podcast. Not just save it, I guess. Third Degree, the Third Degree Net Podcast. Third Degree, the Third Degree.
the green air pocket. Third degree, the third degree air pocket. Third degree, the third degree air pocket.